thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Thank you, guys. Oh, my. Well, the reason I was going to sing that and in there, Kurt's song was so appropriate is because I'm going to deal this morning with hope. Uh, I feel like we're at a time that hope is really waning. Uh, we've, this world, uh, this has been a brutal year. Has anybody noticed that besides me? It's been a difficult year. We've had, uh, the world has experienced unprecedented events in the Middle East, unrest and, and struggle and strife. Russia has been a menace to world peace and and has been invading our neighbors. Uh, Japan, there's nuclear stuff's melted down and they're afraid they're going to pollute the Pacific Ocean. And earthquakes, volcan volcanism has increased. It seems to me that racism has been pushed back to the 60s. Yeah. Again. And uh, it seems like person, the Christians are being persecuted. My friends today around the world, our brothers and sisters are dying for their faith. Beheadings and crucifixions of Christians just because they happen to live around a people that don't agree with them. It seems like our nation can't decide what to do about immigration, um, how to deal with that. Our economy is reeling and struggling. It seems like uh, countries and even states and cities are talking about bankruptcy. Health care costs are soaring. The weather can't seem to decide what it's going to do. It, uh, the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. And we're losing our middle class. That's a lot of bad news. But you didn't come to church this morning to hear bad news. You can watch, you can watch the news anytime and, and get a full dose of bad news. You came this morning to see if there was any hope. If there's any way through this mess. And I've got some really good news for you this morning. There is hope. Yes. Yeah, there's hope. We're going to talk about a guy named... Uh, we're going to deal with the book of Isaiah this morning. Isaiah chapter 40. And I'll be looking a little bit in Jeremiah, but, but Isaiah 40 is where we're going to be preaching from this morning. Isaiah lived and served his people and his God during a time somewhat like this. It was very similar to today's world. Uh, they were down in Babylon. Now the whole Jewish nation had been captured. They'd been dragged off to Babylon. They lived down there under persecution. Uh, just imagine everything that's bad going on around you was going on around them. They were in a horrible fix and a horrible mess. And good old Isaiah began to tell them, guys, don't give up. Don't, don't be discouraged. There's hope. And there's hope in the Lord. Now, no matter what, no matter what, listen to me now, for those that know the Lord, for those that trust in Him, that hope in Him, that have their faith anchored solidly on the rock of ages, there is great hope for you today and for us. I want to tell you, as dark as it gets, where the Bible tells us to lift up our heads, redemption is drawing nigh. So no matter how far down you are down the rabbit hole of discouragement and despair, lift up your heads, folks. Lift up your heads. Now, it's time for us to rethink a, a lot of things. Uh, you know, struggles and trials and difficulties, they force us to, to no longer fall back on tried and true ideas and realities and values. Uh, they, they call, it's a time to rethink and reconnect and, and to see for sure that you are connected to the Lord. I want to say this very, very carefully with all the love I have. For those of you who are in the Lord, those who are saved, those who are trusting Him, the born again, there is great hope. But for those outside, those who have no faith in the Lord, listen, this is a difficult time to live. There is not the hope that we have. Now, so, those that wait on the Lord... Now, we're going to be looking today at a text that's real familiar with you. And we're going to use the word wait as the one King James says, those that wait upon the Lord... But that word is hope, rest, trust, have faith in. You can translate it into English in a multiple different ways. And so I want to say that those who hope in the Lord are going to discover that their lives are radically different to those around you. Your life is going to take on a beauty and a hope and a, a, a hum, a, a, 
a harmonics that is going to be so much different from those folks around you. So today, let's jump into that, that good old Isaiah text uh, of Isaiah chapter 40, and let's read that together and see if we can, can discover this great hope that we have in the Lord. I'm going to start about verse 28, if you will. Jump down to verse 28 of Isaiah 40. Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the Creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow weary, tired or weary, and His understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary. Anybody weary today? Anybody weary today? After the holidays and putting up with family and, and dealing? He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. This morning I wanted to take you back to that old text, that one that, we've, that you all are so familiar with, and try to look into it today and see if God might not be saying something to us that, uh, that we need to hear today. We need to have some hope. Now, what is what are the, the, the things that we hope in? What can happen to those who have their faith in the Lord? How do we make this life work when everyone around us seems to be struggling and falling to the right and to the left? How, do we, how are we different? Well, I think the first difference that we're going to discover is that we who know the Lord are people who live with an unbreakable promise. We've been given a promise from the Lord. I'm going to tell you this. The Lord's promises never fail. They'll never fail you. I don't care when you live, where you live, what you're like, what your personality is like, what your, uh, your, your temperament is like, what your intelligence level is like. I don't care how you trust the Lord. It, it, in other words, I'm trying to say no matter how you are, where you live, the promises of the Lord will never fail. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That's a promise you can hold on to. He's promised us that He's going to be with us and never leave us. That's a promise. It's going to, he's going to keep His promises. They're always yes. The promises of the Lord are always yes. They're never maybe. Uh, that song, there is no shadow. That I just say, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Now with men, sometimes we kind of have a shadow of turning. We'll, we'll say yes when it's comfortable and no when it's... When we, when we get in trouble, if we said yes. Well, you know, men kind of have a shadow of turning. But with God, they're always the same. <clears throat> now it says <clears throat> in Isaiah chapter 40 there, it says in verse 31, but those who hold weight rest on the Lord. And then this word I want to pick out is they will. They will. Not maybe. Not sometimes, maybe not just on the Sabbath, not just in the summertime, but they will. These things are going to happen. There is There will be benefits from the Lord that we don't have to debate or worry about. There's no waffling on God's promises. They're always true. God cannot tell a lie. The Word of God cannot fail. <clears throat> Recently, we, my wife and I have a neighbor who they're dear to us, they're dear neighbors, and and he had worked for a company for many, many years. Long time. And the company called him in one morning and said, uh, you're done. And uh, what you get out of all this is a donut. And they gave him an extra donut that morning. Said, see you later. There's no security in jobs, is there? There's no security in, in our health. You know, uh, we, uh, we, we think we're healthy and... And, and uh, sometimes we find out we're not. I'm discovering something about me. I, I think I'm better off for ceremonial purposes any more than work. <laughs> I was trying to help my brother build a barn this week, and, and uh, I remember how I used to jump around on a scaffold, climb ladders, and swing on the rafters, and and uh, now I kind of stumble around and, and make sure I put my feet. I walk, watch everywhere I'm going, you know. <laughs> Like Tim, what's that going? Tim, Tim yeah. Things change, don't they? Yeah. I'm telling you, we do good for a while. But the Word of God will never fail. Now listen to me. Relationships will fail. The government will fail. Science will fail. 
but the Lord will never fail you. You can hope in that today. And that's something you can take home with you. The Lord will renew your strength. He will do that. It's not just a hope. Let me read you Jeremiah. It says, This I recall to my this I recall to my mind. Therefore I have hope the Lord's loving kindness indeed never will never cease, for his compassions never fail. They're new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Now again, as I said, that Hebrew word, and I'm not going to dig you into the, uh, the, the word, the language, but the word is translated into English. Hope, rest, wait, a faith. You know, it's, it, all these things is what it means. Those that wait on the Lord, that hope, you're going to see the Lord work. It, uh, so what is this meaning of the word wait? What does that mean? I, I was, as I was preparing for the sermon earlier in the week, it dawned on me, I need to look into that word wait. What does that mean? Well, there's two ways to understand it. In the Hebrew, it can either be translated active or passive waiting. Active or passive. It literally is translated both ways. Now, you say, well, what does that mean? Well, those that wait on the Lord. Now, let's, let's take this picture. Those that sit down on the couch and fold their hands and wait on the Lord to do everything for them. That's active. Or that's passive waiting. All right? And it can be translated that, but that's not the best. The better way to translate it is actively waiting. Now, this afternoon, probably some of you will go to a restaurant, right? And you'll sit down in a chair and, and a, a person will come around and say, what do you want to drink? They'll, they'll go get your drink and they'll bring it back to you and they'll say, well, what do you want to eat? And they'll take your order and they'll run it back to the cook and then they'll, they wait on you, actively waiting on you. Now, I've had some passive waitresses, you know. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. We've had a few of them. But well, they're rare. Most of the time we get such great service around here. And these are this is a good place to live. But but the, the but the difference between passive waiting and active waiting makes the difference in how you're going to survive and thrive through this through these things. Those that wait on the Lord, they're not just sitting back with their hands folded, but they're actively waiting on the Lord. They're hoping in Him. They're resting in the Lord. They've just not kicked it out of gear. They're working and trusting in the Lord. Now, I have... one. This is kind of a personal thing with me. I, I trust the Lord as if everything depends upon Him. And I believe that it does. And then I work and live my life as though everything depended upon me. In other words, I do all I can, but I trust, I know that when I fail, because I'm going to, that the Lord will be there and, and lift me up. So those that wait, those that trust in the Lord, uh, will experience all those <laughs> joyful things we've been talking about. Now, we're going to say here, I'm going to say to you though, that the Lord, he, he, he's, he's not going to fail. The Word of God fails, but nothing else will. But He... He gives us enough strength. The second point is, He gives us, us, you and I, enough strength to be a winner. We can succeed. We're going to make it. I know today some of you have come into this service and you've been kicked around. You've been beat up. And you're not sure you're going to make it. I, I talked to you. I know what some of you are thinking. I know how hard life is for you. And, and you've got in here this morning, you're thinking, Preacher, I don't know if I'm going to make this work. Life is so tough right now. Health is failing. Finances are failing. One thing or another. I just don't know if I'm going to make this work. I want to say this to you very carefully. Those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. You will have the strength, the courage, the hope, the faith to make it through. I, I'm going to tell you, not because of you, but because of Him. He's going to renew your strength and give you hope. It says in, uh, there, in, we read that in Jeremiah about how He's going to be there and give us that hope. He's going to, uh, he's going to take care of us when, when we get knocked down. See, we're going to be able to get back up. This is the primary difference between a non-believer and one that is a believer. A non-believer, when they get knocked down, sometimes they stay down. But when a believer gets knocked down, they get up. That's the difference. The Lord gives you strength and stands you back up, puts you back out into the battle. So just because you've been knocked down, don't stay down. Get back up in the Lord. Now, how can we do that? Well, I'm going to show you how we do it. Now, this I'm going to use a metaphor out of, out of my life and a metaphor I think you'll be able to get hold of here. I'm going to tell you we have supernatural help. We don't have natural help. We have supernatural help. And it comes from these words. 
They that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will, they will soar on wings like eagles. Now, let's, let's talk about this. Have you seen eagles? We've been seeing a lot more eagles in this part of the country than we used to. When I was a kid, we didn't see any. But now, we see them every winter. We see several. And you can always recognize an old eagle because he's got those wings stuck straight out. And he's soaring big old circles. He never, hardly ever flaps his wings. He just soars on the currents of the wind, on the convection currents that will lift him up. He just soars. He's looking around for something to eat. He just soars around effortlessly. Effortlessly. Now, come with me. I want to introduce you to another bird. And when I was a kid, we just lived our life around quail hunting. Oh, that's all we did. We hunt quail. I mean, we had them old vests that smelled like quail and dogs. And, and uh, you know, that's that's how we lived. That was my favorite smell in the world was a dog or a quail. You know, our shotgun and all, all that. And that. And that's, that's how we lived our early life was we were hunting hunt quail. Now, a little bit of quail, when he comes off the ground, he comes off the ground in a blur of energy. I mean, he is, those wings are beating just like brrr. I mean, he takes off and beats those wings so hard to get up off the ground. And he fights it. Well, if you can see him, I'm sure he gets up in a black sweat. Because he's working hard. Now, if he knew how poor a shot I was, he wouldn't worry so much. Take his time. But, but they don't know how good a shot I am, so they just, he took off his, I mean, he was just gone as fast as he could go. And, uh, but a quail works hard at it. Now, some of you today are living your lives like quail. Mm -hmm. You're working hard at it. You're beating your wings. You're, oh, you're doing everything you can. You're, taught, you're wore out. You're tired. You've been beat up because you're trying to live life like a quail. It's time to quit being a quail and start being an eagle. They will soar on the wind like eagles. They don't work hard at it. They have supernatural lift under your wings. You'll be trying to go through life. You'll be in a very difficult time, a hard situation. Life is just kicking you around and beating you up and squeezing you into a, a mold. And all you've got to do is just spread your wings. Say, Lord, here it is. I can't do this anymore. I'm going to spread my wings. I'm going to let you lift me up. I'm going to let you soar. I'm going to soar, Lord, on you. You being the wind beneath my wings. And that's what God will do. He takes care of you and will lift you up. So, when you get in trouble, don't be quails. Be eagles. Okay, that's what I, I want to try to convert you today to being eagles. God's love and His promises cannot fail. And when we've exhausted our energy, we get our strength renewed daily. I've said about that. And then the, the supernatural part is we soar on the wind like eagles. Now, the wind is a metaphor also for the pneuma or the word the Holy Spirit. That we ride on the on the lift of the Holy Spirit. He is there with us. He's the power and the wind beneath our wings. Trust in, in God to do this. Now, I need you to know something. God does not want you to quit or to give up. And again, I want to go back and say, I've kind of been reading your minds and your and your I haven't read your mail, but I know what you're going through. And there are some of you here today that are seriously thinking about just giving up. You just you've thought about it. You, in fact, the Lord told me this week in my heart. He said, "You're going to be preaching this sermon to some folks that are about ready to quit to give up, give up on life, give up on family, give up on hope." And He told me today to tell you, "Don't give up. Don't give up. Spread your wings and let the Spirit of God give you the lift." that you need to get through this time. He says, those who trust in the Lord don't give up. They find a way through. He says, they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. He said, don't give up. Keep going. I want to give you the strength that you need to make it work. You're going to be able to make it through. Listen to me carefully. Listen, listen to me. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. I'm telling you, not just you, but the Lord in, under your wings, you're going to make it. Don't give up. Don't quit. I, I, I want very seldom ever get to speak to high school graduations or college graduations. I have a few times, but, but uh, when I do, I always remember Winston Churchill's famous speech. He was called to speak to his, to his alma mater where he went to college or school, and he was called in, and boy, the, the congregation was packed. People were there because Winston Churchill was going to address 
his alma mater. And he, got, he came to the, to the podium and prepared to, to speak. I'm sure he took his cigar out of his mouth, <laughs> laid it on, whatever. And he looked at, the, at those people. He just looked at them for a long, long time, made sure every eye was on him. And then he gave the shortest graduation speech you ever heard. And he said these words, Never, never, never quit. And sit down. <laughs> Don't you wish the preachers would do that? <laughs> Nobody ever complains about two shorters on them. But listen to them. We don't need to. Don't quit. Never, never, never quit. Why? Because the Lord is the wind beneath your wings. Just spread your wings. Quit being quail trying to fly. If I was a quail, I'd get tired and quit. Yeah. But you're not quail. You're eagles. Spread your wings and soar. You're going to have the endurance to make it through. It's going to work. You're going to one day look up and you've been soaring through this old life and you're going to look up and you're going to see the face of Jesus. Amen. And He's going to say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on in now. I'll make you ruler over many. Don't give up. It's closer to the finish line than you think you're going to make it. Those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They'll run and not grow weary. So wait, trust, hope. Not in yourself. Now that quail, he trusts in himself. His own strength, his own energy. He trusts in all that. That's what gets him away from the, the dog or the hunter or the whatever. He trusts in his own strength and he fights hard to get away. But the eagle, he doesn't trust his own strength. He just soars on the wind. They, they love thunderstorms. They love, an eagle will love to fly into a storm because he just gets, gets more lift. He gets to fly higher. Be eagles and not quail. That's our hope today. Trust in the Lord. Let me say it again now. Those that hope, wait, rest, trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They'll run. They won't get weary. They'll walk and they won't faint. Because the Lord is the strength of our life. Let's pray together. Jesus, if we